The lesson topic for this video is I can multiply and divide rational expressions. And this is the difference between level one questions and level two questions for this unit. All right, so we have 5 sixths divided by 3 fourths times 12 eighths. And as you can see then, it is a combination of both a division problem and a multiplication problem. And that's what would make these problems level two questions. Now this specific one is not because these are just fractions with numerical values. Of course, we're gonna use factoring on the next screen, but I just wanted to show you really quickly how the process will work. So obviously we start by paying attention to our signs and we're gonna change any division to multiplication. So we're gonna change this division sign right here to a multiplication sign. But to do that, we need to flip our fraction or find the reciprocal of the fraction that comes after it. So that means I'm going to change um, this fraction here to four over three. So now what we have is five sixths times four thirds times 12 eighths. Notice we do not flip this fraction because the sign in front of it is multiplication. So we only flip the fraction and take the reciprocal of the one that comes directly after the division sign. At this point, we can start simplifying our fractions. We know that, for example, there's different ways to do this, but uh, four divided by four is one. And in the denominator over here, eight divided by four is two. We can also simplify by dividing um, three divided by three is one. And this 12 up here divided by three is four. And there's one last simplifying you can do. And again, if you don't do this, if you don't notice it right now, you still will be able to do it after you multiply across the numerators and the denominators. But we can also notice that the four here could be divided by two and we get two. And then we could divide this six by two and get three. You could have also divided this four and this two, simplified that fraction. I just simplified over to here. Um, again, as long as one value is in the numerator and one is in the denominator, it doesn't matter uh, where you do the simplifying. Now, before I actually multiply across the numerators and the denominators, I just noticed that there is actually one additional place that we can simplify. So let's find that, and maybe you see it. This two here and this two here makes one. So again, two divided by two is one, two divided by two is one, and I believe now we have everything simplified that we could possibly simplify. So across the top, we have five times one times one, which is five. And we have three times one times one, which is three. It is an improper fraction. We could change it to one and two thirds, uh, but five thirds is fine. Okay, so how does that translate into this work here with our more complex rational expressions? Well, same process. We have a fraction divided by a fraction multiplied by a fraction. And therefore, we need to pay attention to the fact that this is a division right here. So we're going to want to change that right away. We're going to change that division sign to a multiplication sign. And when we do that, we need to take the reciprocal of the fraction that follows it. So we're going to take the reciprocal here. We will write x squared minus 4 in the numerator. Move that. And we'll write 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 in the denominator. At this point, we need to do our factoring work. And again, factor, factor, factor is the name of the game here. Um, if you struggle with factoring, let me know so we can have um, some additional practice with that in class. But right now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to factor every numerator and every denominator on your own and then let's check back in just a second uh, to see if you have all the correct factors. And then after that, we will do our simplifying. Okay, so pause the video, factor everything. Okay, so I want you to very carefully check that you have factored all six parts correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any of those that you did not factor correctly, I want you to either find your mistake or maybe actually circle the part that you got wrong so that you can ask me about that in class. Okay, it's very important that you can factor each and every one of these accurately because otherwise you will not be able to arrive at the correct answer at the end. All right, at this point we've got our 
simplifying work to do, which means make a 1, or in other words, cancel out common factors from the numerator and the denominator. All right, so you can go out this at any process. I see this x minus 2 and x minus 2, and then this x plus 3 and this x plus 3. I see a 2x plus 3 in the denominator and the numerator. And let's see if there's anything remaining. There's one additional thing we can simplify right here. Okay, none of the parentheses. Okay, we've got an x minus 3 and an x plus 2 in the numerator, but we don't have either of those factors left in the denominator. We have a 5 here and a 4. Those can't be simplified because they are not divisible by the same number other than 1. But what we do have here is x squared, which is another way of saying x times x, if you want to think about x squared as being x times x, which means that we can cancel one of these x's out here with this x here. At this point, we can write our final answer. In the numerator, we have x, x, I'm sorry, 5, x, x minus 3, and x plus 2. I'll we'll write that right here, 5 x, x minus 3, and x plus 2. In the denominator, we have nothing left here. We have a 3x minus 1, a 4, and a 2x minus 3. So we will write 4, 3x minus 1, 2x minus 3. This is our final answer. Nothing left to simplify. You might want to double check that when you're done, see if there's anything left, and there is not. Again, please ask in class if you have any questions about factoring or about simplifying and making a one.